Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Kinect Lab Broadcast from our headquarters here in New Taipei. I'm Reza, and here today with us is our PM, Sam. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, before I go on and introduce the topic, I just want to let you know that most of us have uh, these uh, issues with network and the switch and when we have to try to set the environment and everything, but we also have to know how to configure it, right? Yeah. So what we're going to talk today is uh, we're going to see the network and the virtual switch part on the QNAP NAT and how to configure it and also Sam will give us more detail with a video demonstration and introduction to it. And uh, yeah, let's move on and uh, see what is the topic. As I mentioned, is the network and virtual switch, which is a part of the QNAP NAS and really important actually as a service uh, uh, application and a setup tutorial. So we will see some of the network and virtual switch uh, features where we can actually access it from the settings in the QTS. And uh, this is how it will look like the UI, but we will talk about that part also in more details uh, after. So what is this and what, what is the network and virtual switch? As you can see with this diagram, uh, we have the virtual world and we have the physical world. And what we can we do is uh, put the NAS in the middle and use it as a gateway to connect these two, uh, both two worlds and get the best out of it. And uh, we have, for example, uh, as you know, in the QTS, uh, QNAP NAS, you can build uh, virtual machines, yeah. you can use containers, yeah. and similarly, you can also use virtual routers and virtual firewalls, which yeah. we're going to talk into more details after. And then we can utilize all these kind of things of the QNAP NAS uh, services to connect with the physical part for faster, uh, how to say, uh, connection or the data file transfer or also, as we know, we have a lot of NASs now with the 10 gig uh, support. Yeah. So we will see more details about the virtual switch and how we connect this part after. So we have this use case and maybe Sam will uh, yeah. tell us more. Uh, now, uh, in the past few years, uh, some customer heard uh, heard the uh, virtual uh, virtualization station or mm. container station. They will think, "Wow, a high level application yeah. is only for IMD developer yeah, tool." Yeah. But actually, for most people, uh, uh, run the uh, virtual network function is a high 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 end wording is a BMF. It's mm -hmm. very popular now. Actually, it's a, a virtual service like a virtual router or virtual firewall. Mm -hmm. They put the uh, they they have a same function for router and the firewall, but virtualize this and let build this OS and put into the NAS. Mm, yeah. Okay. So they can um directly install a virtual router. Then you can guarantee you have a VPN connection and the stable connection and. More and more people, uh, they focus on network security, okay. and but so it just only install a virtual firewall can easily protect your internal network. Okay, so this is a more uh, safer and secure way to do yes. and protect all and, the network. Uh, and today's live demo will talk about how to install a, a virtual router and the virtual firewall and mm -hmm. how to configure the network. Okay. And. Another use, the second use case uh, is for e-commerce platforms. Yeah. Uh, some enterprise customer they develop and maintain a B2C online stores. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, uh, they will use a virtual switch and then start some container packet to run a different microservice. Like uh, the first one is an yeah. engine. Yeah. It's a web server, just like Apache. Oh, Apache okay. web server. Okay. So user user usually use it to build the eShop's web page or some UI page, mm -hmm. and also they uh, they will launch the second uh, container package like Redis. Redis is very popular. Uh, it's a catch DB, so all the data can exchange very fast because they are running in the memory. Okay. So they will uh, build some running some function on it, like a uh, top sale list, or show, uh, or do some event like a uh, second killing event. Okay. 
uh, you know what is the second killer? Uh, I learned this from you earlier yeah. when you told me that uh, uh, when they in some uh, online shop uh, they have maybe uh, now it's f 5 o'clock in yeah. Taiwan and maybe they have an event at 6 o'clock yes. and have uh, some product, uh, popular product and a very big discount, very good price for mm. it but only maybe 5 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> That's why second killing. Yeah, right? you yeah. have five seconds to uh, kill five the whole se deal. Five seconds, then so on. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The second kill. So you use, uh, you can use actually the uh, database of Redis to set up uh, this kind yes. of deals in your eShop and also set the top selling list if I'm not wrong. Yeah, and also they should uh, launch another pack, uh, container package mm -hmm. like uh, MangoDB. All right. They can save the important data like. Uh, Pro product information, mm -hmm. they link to the photo product, uh, photograph, and uh, maybe the category for of product, and also the uh, they can manage the orders, uh, mm -hmm. their stock. So this is very that. important actually for product management, project yes. management, as yeah. it has dynamic schemes yeah. with the Mango MongoDB, yeah. and yeah. it has incorporates any type of data. Yeah. So they can dynamically combine those microservices with okay. the network via our virtual switch. Okay. okay. So, yeah, I, I just thought uh, it can virtual switch can help you to mm. build the micro segment network yeah. uh, for okay. different service requirement. Like here, I list the most popular uh, virtual service. Okay. Uh, the right side is uh, virtual virtual appliance yeah. for virtual machines and the virtual machine on the virtualization station uh, virtual appliance uh, most popularly run uh, virtual auto, virtual firewall or OpenWRT and uh, they will use a virtual machine that, and they will start a Win server okay. uh, 2016, 2019 or around the okay. Win 10 and uh, of course virtual machine can run the uh, Linux OS but it's too heavy to do it, mm -hmm. so so user usually run the Linux always on container, so you can see the left side, mm -hmm. uh, they will use container to run some mm -hmm. some OS like Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, or Red Hat, and the uh, busy bus also very hard, and for web service container supports engines, WordPress, or if you are old school. Use the uh, <laughs> yeah Apache use uh, HTTPD yeah. or Tomcat, and uh, we also support uh, Redis for CatchDB mm -hmm. and uh, some data famous database like MongoDB, PostgreSQL, or CoachBase. Uh, it's a NoSQL based uh, service, and uh, via the virtual switch, you can dynamic to change the. The segment, the segment for only for your purpose. Like uh, we talk about, we build a, a web server engines, Redis and MongoDB. You just running in uh, like like a blue blue mm -hmm. colors virtual switch. Then other service cannot access this. Okay, so you can also actually set an isolated network with the virtual switch. Yes, and if you want more security for run, to run your service, uh, maybe you can launch a virtual machine to as a virtual firewall then okay. connect to this virtual switch then it can protect your service oh as i see yes the line here where it's connecting from the virtual appliances there's a green line connecting to the green yeah. virtual switch but actually you can change the uh, network configuration mm. to to direct connect to the blue colors virtual switch you can also do that yes. directly oh, very convenient okay so this is our architecture to let user can uh, ch check more detail how we design it. Mm -hmm. uh, the first block in the bottom of this page mm -hmm. is our physical layer. We support a different Ethernet from 1 gig, 10 gig to 100 gig. Wow. And uh, we support a Thunderbolt interface, uh, Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3. Yeah. Also, we support a uh, wireless interface, uh, AC. And the 600 is the as the Wi-Fi as mm -hmm. its point, and also we support the Wi-Fi USB USB dongle to be the Wi-Fi client, and we also support a USB quick access interface. And the upper than physical layer um, is our kernel. We run the uh, 
standard uh, Linux 4.14 is a long-term support mm -hmm. version and very popular on the market. And the um, middle layer, is, this block is our network function. So talking about our what network function we support. We have a routing table, uh, we support port chunking, IPv4, IPv6, VPN, DNS, PPPO, VLAN, and then we can also run some service like DHCP, uh, DDNS, uh, IDVD, and NCSI. And the, the upper block here is uh, our virtual switch. So we provide those network functions to uh, to uh, virtualization stations and for different kind of uh, container like LSC types container or Dux types container and a lot of QNAP containerized app like IoT, mm -hmm. AI, and uh, FTTT, something like that. And many other apps I believe. So yeah. to illustrate that one that you just said, that, so this is how it will actually maybe look like on the left uh, right hand side is the physical part yeah. right so we have high speed 10 gig uh, switch and we have a lot of switches also yeah. from the QNAP NAS that we are uh, from the QNAP company that we we are doing actually in this uh, area and also the left hand side is the virtual part so as you mentioned you can actually set the view router or the firewall virtual uh, communication with uh, you can do with the containers, the virtual machines, and uh, this all goes in 10 gig, right? Yeah. And the NAS is there to manage all this part, as uh, we see, we, we, we just saw the previous slide, uh, to, to manage all this part, right? Yeah. To have the physical connection and the virtual part, and the NAS in between, that runs uh, the network uh, architecture. So to conclude, this is a connect internal and external environment with a 10 gig speed, which we'll be focusing also on to our today's uh, whole presentation and video. And uh, but uh, also it supports the gigabit Ethernet. Also, it has multi gig. Uh, most of the NASes, all the NASes actually have the multi gig uh, uh, port yeah. that you can run for different purposes, also for home users or anything. But what is uh, good and uh, interesting is that a lot of NASes are actually built with the 10 gigabit Ethernet port and it can be used for a lot of uh, different purposes for large data transfers, yeah. data files and I've seen that also for our videos here we actually use it for video editing. editing yeah, for Premiere or for Final Cut Pro yeah. uh, need a high speed uh, transmission to edit in their 4K resolutions video or even to AK. Yes, it has been very convenient and uh, also for backup. Yeah. For backup is actually very, very good. Important. And we have also other, other solutions and architecture that we will explain more details about this. And uh, we support, most of the QNAP NASA's support uh, Thunderbolt 3. Uh, it's support for all Mac users. For all Mac users, yeah. Yeah. So you can do all those things with Thunderbolt 3 and 10 gigabit yeah. uh, internet. <laughs> all right, so Talking about that, how we can do all those things, the Tengi, we have a lot of solutions that came up here. Is the first is the QWA AC2600 uh, PCIe Wi-Fi adapter, which can be mounted in the NAS, very easy. We also have other videos showing how to do that. When If you can search for this video at live.qnap.com, there we have the video or also on YouTube, how we do this uh, and utilize the wireless uh, services from this card with the QNAP NAS. But we also have a lot of other cards, expansion cards, and other uh, services in this one with 10 gigabit Ethernet. We have our tw 40 and 25 using the Mellanox chip. But we also have the 10 gigabit Ethernet of Wonsha and from the Intel X5050. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, more than 550, we have another type, but this is our basic model for expansion. Yes. So we, we, this is what we are, because we have also other expansion cards, yes, right? the yeah. QM2 and those. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for we also want to focus uh, on this part to make actually let people know that it is also very useful for the Mac users. It is flexible and has a very good interface. So all you have to do is to plug it in, get the QFinder Pro, which is a, a, does the auto scan for you, and it will actually list all the NAS devices there and find the one that is uh, suitable for you 
and it is very easy actually to mount it and set all the auto adjustments there. You can see here on the right uh, part of the screen, you select the IP address and select the protocol which one you want to use as it supports the Samba protocol or uh, NFS and FIP but we recommend to use the Samba because it gets your highly performance. Mm, so it's a better performance with yeah. this one. So it is easy for Mac users also. So if you are a Mac user, you can actually access and use the QNAP NAS very efficiently. So Thunderbolt High Performance, again, has a very exclusive uh, user interface and we are still talking about the Mac performance and we can see that the, it goes to right of 1000, almost 1300, reads 1400, yeah. but we've seen that the, it, it has gone to 2000 megabyte per second performance uh, yeah. according to in some wi Windows workstations. Yeah. For uh, actually, uh, our Thunderbolt uh, is running on the network protocols, so uh, we can reach to uh, 1,300 to 1,600 for Mac user. You see, we mm -hmm. pass it yeah. as a, a 5K resolution with uh, uh, 60 gigabytes data, so it's a real test. Mm. And uh, for some uh, Windows workstation, they can reach almost to, uh, to 2,000. But this is a really high performance actually, yes. it's really good, I'm impressed. So the 10 gig generation, is this is the package, like a package that we have, or yeah. it's a, how to say, a scheme that you can build a network all uh, based on 10 gigabit Ethernet. Yeah, because in past few years, our customer will ask, Oh, why only QNAP have the 10 gig port? Yeah, but yeah. I don't have device can connect it yet. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But now we have a, a 10 gig package can help user to easier to build their 10 gig environment. environment. Yeah. So if you you start with a virtual machine, yeah. and then we have a QNAP 10 gigabit NAS, and if you want to see which one uh, NAS which NASes are, you can go to QNAP.com. Yeah or ask our sales team for which NAS Actually, is the best. Actually, most of the NAS is for 10 gig. Yeah, most of the NAS is, but which one would be more su suitable for, uh, for yeah, the user. Right. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, like before QNAP actually started early with the 10 gig, and yeah. a lot of people were concerned about the devices, where to connect and which one. Yeah, with this one, QNAP has also solutions, has a QNAP 10 gig with the Ethernet switches. And uh, like the unmanaged switch, the QSW301C uh, recently, and this is, uh, I think this is the QSW1208, uh, yeah. and uh, so you have two different choices, you can check whichever switch is better for you, is the unmanaged switch, and also has a QNA, Q, uh, QNA. QNA adapter, which is a it's Thunderbolt to Thunderbolt 10 converter. Converter. This is also for faster speed, right? Yes. And then you have the 10 gig. You can set up the 10 gigabit uh, Windows for stations. Yeah. So now mo the most marble already support 10 gig is an port. But if you are use the uh, last gen use the different generation mm -hmm. of one station, uh, in previous two page we talk about QNAP expansion card. Yeah, and yeah. They all support uh, Windows base, so you can buy a uh, expansion card, then put in your Windows workstation. Then your Windows workstation can already support 10 Yeah. So it's the whole solution is here. The whole 10 gig solution is here. One stop shop, QNAP. Yeah. <laughs> Just reach your uh, yeah. content, your uh, QNAP sales. Yeah, local sales that we have like all over the world, really. And yeah, you can just go and make the best out of it. So there are the features of the network and virtual switch are that first, as I mentioned, it is a easy UI design. So with this one, actually, uh, I'll show the, the another slide where you actually can locate the Ethernet port, yeah. right? And it has a clear topology for virtual and physical networking. You can see there in the overview part of the UI and the network and the virtual switch and the interfaces can display customized names they have a customized you can do customized VDNS 
you can use support stateful and stateless auto configuration with the IP version 6 addresses and you have uh, support for IP version 6 RA DVD service it's similar like a DHCP service yeah. but help you to assign the IP address IPv6 address to different device all right okay. so but it supports also the IP version for DHCP service yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so and the default gateway CSI service and the static route so you can also use that yeah. and uh, we also will uh, we will announce today right the, yeah, new, well, the new function yeah but actually not we can announce but not really easier oh, okay yeah, yeah but we can announce it yeah, here yeah, that yeah. it is uh, yeah. okay <laughs> so stay stay tuned we will see what is uh, by the end of this or what is the new feature yeah all right so as I mentioned this is the UI and the overview part this is how it actually looks like the network and virtual switch and uh, you have the location uh, part the locate button where, where you can see from which port and which which connection is actually on the NAS and it will be highlighted with a green uh, color here so this is kind of zoomed in but you get the idea you see that you have the for example we click the Thunderbolt 1 part here it has a set of the three buttons the three dots and you can locate or actually check the settings of it yeah. and uh, by the topology we see that uh, we have uh, virtual machines can bridge to external network by virtual switch and the physical LAN port and you can see this one is uh, that it has uh, two virtual Machine. adapters yeah. virtual yeah. machines yeah. one yeah. is the Windows 7 so and Win 10. Win Windows 10 right and they are going through this uh, virtual switch yeah. in between and as you can see they have after they can uh, uh, access adapter 3 for a external yes. uh, connection and the other one this uh, looks do doesn't look like uh, I mean it might look that has a lot of things but is actually simpler than you think as it has uh, different containers these are all containers right yeah they all and they are con connected to this uh, virtual switch but it is an isolated network right yeah. so they all are in one this one but they don't have to go outside so you can you actually use the containers each and every container and as uh, Sam mentioned earlier for example you have containers for the uh, Linux uh, OS's yeah. which will be very convenient to use it this way yeah. be because they are kind of heavy but this way you can get the best out of them and it is a very convenient way to do so so DHCP auto you can de assign DHCP IPs automatically and enable the NAT if you actually need to access the internet after yes. right so I didn't forget anything yeah correct. <laughs> okay <laughs> very good and uh, to get this uh, overview like to distinguish apart like we see the one that has connect it, it is connected to the external network and the one that is not connected to the external network like the upper part the tick and you see the world is like the earth yes, icon yeah. there right and uh, you can see that this one uh, it has access to external network by the physical wongi uh, adapter through the virtual switch 3 which is in the middle here and the other one is uh, the isolated one that doesn't yeah. have the uh, connection to go outside and this group of uh, virtual machines actually is connected to virtual switch 4 and uh, it doesn't have the earth symbol yeah, yeah. that means that they cannot access yeah. the internet and the NAT symbol as we see there for the virtual switch 3 which is there no no NAT the, no NAT here on the virtual 4 yeah yeah all right so yeah we, we've been talking and trying to explain until uh, we reach this moment so we will also talk more details now to the virtual switch how to because it, it is very flexible and how to configure these uh, virtual services and the first part would be to configure the network for uh, virtual, router, router, yeah. virtual router and the uh, second part would be to configure the network uh, for virtual, virtual firewall yeah. and protect the devices security is important right yeah <laughs> So how to configure the network of uh, for virtual router? 
First, uh, for example, we have to install a virtual machine and where to do so in virtualization station that we have in the QTS. And you can, most of the uh, users actually know how to do this if you actually uh, already install virtualization station in the QNAP NAS. And then after there, you click, uh, the f you, you go further there to the settings, right? Yeah, uh, actually you should uh, download the image f from ah, yeah. the image file of the virtual router. And, yeah. uh, now the most popular and the, the cheapest is uh, router OS. It's our from one of our partner, Miratech, and you okay. can direct download it from their website or some download from internet, and you uh, install in the virtual machines. Then you configure the network. Mm. Here it just defines uh, how many WANs, WANs interface you want to use. Uh, most people only have one as internet service provider, okay. and but if you are uh, heavy gamer guy. or a rich guy <laughs> uh, you maybe have a redundant for different ISP service mm. provider maybe uh, the first ISP you use uh, NTNT and uh, the second ISP you use uh, very very strong or so some other, mobile uh, yeah, mm. other providers then if that uh, you must create two different uh, virtual NIC for okay. those two web and no matter uh, how many free ports you want to use for LAN? Mm -hmm. uh, you, ju you just create one uh, vi visco NIC for the LAN port. Okay. Uh, and if you have a, a tangy in, uh, intranet and you want to do the high speed transmission and connect to the virtual router, you also need one more device for this. So for this the tangy segment. segment, you add, actually add a new device? Yeah. All right. And the last part is the ISP report connection to virtual router WAN. So we have this. Uh, you can use actually. You can actually use the AC twenty six hundred to extend the LAN via Wi Fi. Yes. All right. So let's see how to configure the network for virtual router. So these are. We have here three different uh, environments. Uh, three different segments. Segments. Yeah. Yeah. And that means you have to create three different devices for three different segments. And maybe one for internal, your uh, PC, desktop can come to mm -hmm. each other. And another segment, the second segment is 192.168.99.1. It's yeah. maybe another private segment for your surveillance systems. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if you uh, use IoT as this point, other uh, applications, you have to create the third segment, different segment. Yeah. And for internet, uh, we have uh, virtual router can provide a stable connection mm -hmm. and uh, some VPN service. Uh, like here, uh, we create a VPN tunnel to another mm -hmm. uh, NAS, right. and uh, uh, we create a tunnel first is uh, start an uh, encrypted tunnel okay. and uh, plug one more uh, encrypted IP seconds. That means um, you are easy to cheat with okay, uh, China's great firewalls. Alright, I got it, I got it. So this is actually good to bypass some yeah. restrictions. Alright. And uh, we have a oh, we demo can. for this one, right? Yes. So we can, while we were just talking, we can show it to the users. Okay. And see here, all right. Okay, so now I create, uh, I launch the virtualization station and the network and virtual switch. Okay. Okay, now oh, I delete my right. virtual router. Okay, here, you just create a virtual machine. The type of uh, virtual, virtual machine's name. So, to create a virtual machine first, you yeah. have to fill in these. Oh, it's an OS type oh. generic. Um, depends on your uh, running service, you can mm -hmm. decide the CPU and the memory usage, the memory is, uh, resource for it. Alright. Okay, and then choose the image. 
So before you create any other virtual machine, you actually choose the image here, yeah. and then you create the virtual machine. Uh, I believe it, no need in this so large. So I just change it to the uh, hard storage oh. from one gig. One gig. Yeah. All right. Then here we go to Lot OS and click the setting button and uh, select a network. Now only uh, one adapter. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it's for when. So, so you need add to uh, add more interface for network. Okay. If you only have one LAN, mm -hmm. then you just uh, choose the virtual switch. What you want to run it. If you have a tangy internet, oh, remember you should change the model to virtual IO. Only virtual IO can provide a tangy right. bandwidth. Right. Okay. Then after that, you can start your virtual machines. So what we did is here we had one WAN, LAN, and the tangy. We have one LAN to. Uh, one WAN and two LAN. Oh, one uh, WAN and two LAN. Uh, and one LAN is for tanky. Alright. Okay. So here's all the parts we install it. So this is a virtual router that you're trying to set it up right now. Yeah. Uh, from the virtual machine. And it's booting from hard disk. Finished. So we can Sorry. log in the uh, virtual router now. Okay. Print. So you can see now we already have three different interfaces. Okay, then you should assign the IP address for you for the web. So you're assigning IP address for uh, each of them? Uh, Ethernet one. So now it's Ethernet one? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Now, uh, uh, yeah, I will assign it to Ethernet one. To interface equals Ethernet one. Okay. So Ethernet one, yeah. So print again. You can see uh, I have an okay. IP address for it. Okay, then we go back to the network and virtual switch. Okay, you can see I have a uh, three adapter. Yeah. Uh, over router OS, one, two, three. Uh, oh, one, and the first one is to this. Yeah. So I connect to T Mobile. And this virtual switch, you can define their names, different names. Okay, so for it, you just choose the uh, ah, you, can, uh, okay. you can rename it. Can, uh, like, uh, if you use a T-Mobile service, you just T-Mobile. Or if you like a Vodafone, uh, you okay. can change your name. Right. So you can yeah. customize it the yes. way you want and uh, better manage it for yourself. And uh, remember here, uh, you one more check. Uh, your Ethernet is connected to one gigalet mm -hmm. uh, because the usually our uh, ISP uh, internet service provider only provide less than one giga. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and lot OS adapt one. Yeah. Okay. Click next. Oh, sorry. Go back. Remember, uh, don't. Uh, depends on uh, your ISP provider setting. Your router, their router setting. If they automatically assign IP address to you, uh, just no matter what their setting, just click here. Don't assign IP address for virtual switch. Okay. That means uh, the network package will not go to the NAS first. 
just pass through then pass. go to the virtual router as well so pass through the NAS so we, we will actually set uh, everything go through the virtual switch so it doesn't access everything in the NAS yes because you don't have an IP address yeah change the cable to All this right. service we need that to change it faster and uh, uh, let me config sorry yeah okay so awesome. the user interface actually of the uh, network and the virtual switch is very okay. user friendly and we see on the left hand side the uh, virtual router and all those uh, that we are building from virtual machines and then in the middle we have the virtual switch and at the right end we have the physical adapters and we are trying to establish all this connection among these devices uh, using the virtual switch uh, service by the QNAP NAS on the network and the virtual switch settings okay now so I directly connect to this this line to router OS mm -hmm. adapter one so you can direct type the IP address what you config then you can set all the service for it or uh, if you want a uh, micro team mm -hmm. they have a, a tool for set up everything uh, it's named winbox oh, so yeah. you can use it to config you can use it for configuration yes okay so that's my yeah okay so we can go back to the slides and see uh, what is uh, next because we also have to do the uh, firewall yeah right so to create a virtual firewall to protect the devices uh, it's we go through the virtualization station again right install yeah. the VM the virtual machine but you here don't, you, you have not to download yourself uh, we already published mm, on yeah. our VM market yeah so we have the VM marketplace directly there you just have the pfSense yes and use it that one and then move on to the network and virtual switch and you showed us actually this one create a virtual switch and we, we can check uh, which adapter we are uh, using it right yeah and uh, for pfSense we have the virtualization pfSense here we make sure, sure. we uh, take this we select these two right and then we go and set up an isolated configuration yeah. right uh, so also do not assign IP address for this one as earlier yeah. with the virtual router yeah. so these three simple steps you have to remember I think and then it is easy to do so to set the virtual firewall but uh, we have this scheme here and maybe we can talk first explain it well, how this all is set and then go and try to do the demo uh, where we have uh, uh, the firewall settings yeah. and the connect to the home internet from the so first we are going from this uh, device here from the ATAT switch this is a switch right uh, yeah actually it's a service provider's router all right uh, yeah, so all the uh, your service provider uh, they you connect your network to adapt tree yeah but, but you not use there it's not a side IP so that means all the pa network packets will go inside the NAS will not go inside to access the NAS they just directly go to the uh, PFSense oh. adapter one that's right. the one of the PFSense so all the packages first have to go through the blue line yes. to check for its authentic uh, if they are authentic if they are like yeah. good actors and then we can actually use the NAS service IP with the LAN from PFSense virtual adapter, virtual switch 3, and have access to connect to the other uh, devices uh, that we have here, the intranet. Yeah, and right. they all be pro protected by the firewall. Firewall in the NAS. Yeah. All right, so maybe we can prepare to see the, how this all works and see the demo. Okay. And, uh, you can show us more details of it. Okay. Also, yeah. you launch the uh, uh, virtualization station first, 
and go to the VM marketplace. And here, you just click deploy, then can help you direct download the PFSense image and help you to build it. Select the place where you want to install and click OK. Then when everything done, uh, it will like uh, here. Mm -hmm. Also check the setting. It work. It will uh, enable two NIC. One is for WAN and one is for LAN. So you choose the uh, like the WAN to the isolated virtual switch. Uh -huh. Okay. Then uh, you choose the adapt to your LAN port to another virtual switch. Then click apply. Then start it. Now it started. You can see. <laughs> it actually, yeah. So we have pre access virtual adapter 2 that is connected to virtual switch 4. Yeah. And from virtual switch 4 to adapter uh, two, 2. And connect to intranet. Connect to intranet after that. Yeah. So this is a nice uh, environment. Uh, okay. And uh, from uh, adapter one, we'll connect to uh, ISP. Iso isolated ISP, uh, this virtual switch. Mm -hmm. then okay. Okay. Uh, this is refreshing, so we can see. Uh, all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now it's work. The red connect to this virtual switch, then connect to the uh, firewalls web. And maybe some customer, uh, they want in previous, uh, in previous page, we talk about uh, some customer use a virtual router and the virtual firewall all together. Yeah. How to config it? It's very simple. Uh, you just let your uh, lamp okay. to connect to another different isolated virtual switch. Here, I have one virtual switch six. All right. I created before, but. If you want, you can create another new one. Just click add. And select your PFSense adapter tool. Yeah. And if you want to uh, go through the firewall first, do a security check, then go to uh, your virtual router, then choose the uh, virtual router's adapter one. Okay. okay. Uh, this only this two nick and click next then don't do not assign IP address because the file uh, pfsense firewall will assign IP to your virtual okay. router okay so click next apply so now you just set another you you combine the both of them yeah with a new virtual switch. New virtual switch. And as we see this one, it will all go through the firewall and you can actually protect it. Yeah. And then now I should launch the router. The router. Okay. Okay. Then we go back to the network virtual switch and we check that the virtual switch. All right. As a this uh, we wait to load for this one yeah because uh, now it's bad what okay. i think go <laughs> sorry yeah. we, we keep changing the cable so we can uh, actually run these uh, connections and show it real time on the overview here yeah right yeah okay so now you can see you from your isp provider uh, the internet is directly uh, go to the pfsense uh, firewalls when mm -hmm. then from firewalls then uh, PFSense adapter 2 will go to virtual switch 8 and then go to the uh, router OS 1. So all the network uh, are isolated. So just run on the different uh, virtual service but mm -hmm. cannot access the NAS. Then router OS is when uh, 
let, let, let me pop can directly assign IP address for your internal network. Okay. So I guess okay. we, we covered everything that we wanted to say here. And we can go and uh, see because you wanted to announce something today. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, is it going to be now? Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, soon we will re release a new function is for uh, MVS multiple VLAN. Mm -hmm. It's for a multiple VLAN. Uh, some IT guy, uh, this is a uh, IT guy's requirement. Okay. Uh, they usually uh, create a lot of different VLANs, like for example, uh, VLAN 10 for sales department, VLAN 20 for financial department, uh, VLAN 30 for marketing, Mm -hmm. And maybe in different fraud, they assign a million forty to ND department, and ND cannot directly access the financial department's document because okay. they are in different uh, VLAN segment. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, but when they need to access the NAS, usually IT guys need to use more equipment to attack the VLAN and connect to the NAS. But now we will be support the uh, multiple VLAN so you, mm -hmm. your NAS can directly connect to the VLAN trunk port. All right, so the new feature is going to be multi multiple VLAN uh, yeah. support. Su support service. <laughs> All right, so I think we covered everything and this uh, was with the network and virtual switch. And uh, just to go back to the opening and close it all, we are here. As we talked today, the network and virtual switch, we saw the introduction, what are the features, the UI, and also we had two live demos on uh, setting the virtual router, setting the virtual firewall, and the announcement that we soon we are going to support and provide the service of the multiple VLANs yes. with the communications there. And yeah, this is it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, go to livecunab.com, or if you're in Taiwan and you want to buy uh, QNAP NAS or any of the 10 gig solutions that we gave you today, go to store.qnap.com.tw and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>